Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I'm Paul. I'm Paul Downey. Um, actually, I'm also a co-founder of Oshkosh, which is, you know, this is Oshkosh, I guess. So um, I hope you're going to be thankful with me that somebody who's uh, who is blind. Uh, I tried to help build some of this uh, today. I'm a technical architect. I'm in the, uh, the government digital service, which is part of the cabinet office in your actual government. Uh, so I'm a civil servant. Um, if you, in case you're wondering what a technical architect is, as I was when I took the job, uh, it turns out to a developer who spends a disproportionate amount of his time in meetings. Um, <laughs> so the reason why, why GDS, the Government Digital Service, came about was from this letter. Uh, it was written by Mark Lane, uh, Mark Lane, Mark Lane Fox. Sorry, I've got a friend called Scott Fox, and every time I say Mark Lane Fox, I mean Scott Fox. Um, but anyway, uh, Mark Lane uh, Fox wrote this letter. She wrote it with a, um, a bunch of friendly people, uh, but basically it was a discovery. Um, and, you know, she said what she thought government should do with this digital state, all the websites it had. And, um, it's a pretty good read, I can recommend it to you. Uh, she sent it to Francis Moore. Um, basically, the, the recommendations in the letter uh, were create GDS. Well, she didn't say GDS, but she said create somewhere which would be the center of excellence and understood the web. And also have the uh, purse strings for very large you know, IT projects. Uh, fixed publishing, so I'll talk about that in a second, but there was publishing in government at the time was a bit of a mess. Um, fixed transactions, that's how you do things on the web, you know, buy, you know, uh, pay your tax, uh, renew your, your driving license, you know, renew your passport, blah. Then go wholesale. We're going wholesale, uh, we're still uh, discussing what discuss that means, but largely, if you think uh, those transactions are a retail experience, you're going there to come into the shop, going wholesale is enabling other people to do that on your behalf. The best example I've heard of that might be when you buy a car, it's already taxed on your behalf. Now, the other thing I should sort of say is uh, I haven't got slides as such. This is actually a browser, and uh, if things go wrong, well, you know, we'll see how it works out. It's the first time I've tried this, uh, for a talk of this then. Um, so these are all things on the web, um, and I should have really shown you the URLs, but uh, it's a bunch of apps. Uh, I'll show the URLs at the end of it, but they're all things which are publicly visible on the web already. Uh, this is um, uh, Francis Moore's reply to Mark Lane Scott. Mark Lane? Yeah, Mark Lane Fox is a. Uh, I'm, I'm, dis I'm a pretty, pretty uh, depressed, I can't pronounce her name. She's really lovely. Um, so, this is a, his response to her, um, her letter. And it's about as close as a minister will ever get to you know, JFDI. Um, it's, it's great, and again, I commend that to your, to your understanding. So, this is. The website she was talking about, you know, in by and large, she used the word, rather than good UK, she used the word direct good. It's brilliantly a good, 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 good case. Um, except, of course, if anybody understands DNS, and to be actually kind of trying to manage the DNS is actually really, really difficult. But um, actually having that brand is really important to us, and it's great. Uh, but this is direct good as it was around a lot of the time. It's actually quite difficult to understand what's going on. Uh, the reason why I can show it to you today is because it's, it's actually on the National Archives. Um, so, um, yeah, this is what, see the red banner at the top telling you uh, it's on the National Archives. I can probably explain a little bit about how uh, National Archives works in a minute. Um, but it's great that these all things which we replaced, uh, this is a business link, uh, actually are still, you know, you can still see them or see copies of them. Um, and it's great, you know, and the same thing happens to the UK as we progress, I'll show you in a second. So this is, um, this is also um, all the kind of department websites. So there were these two big websites, Direct Good Listing, which are what call, we call now called mainstream content for citizens. And then every department had its own kind of uh, website, its own point of presence on the web. That turned out to be um, a bit of a thing because, um, yeah, it's, I don't know if it's the XKCD cartoon about universities. It's like a Venn diagram of what university websites have, yeah. and there's a Venn diagram, and there's a, like a, a circle of what people want. And the bit in the middle, you know, is very small. And it, I think it's not unfair to say that was a state of art with uh, a lot of these department websites. There are about 300 government agencies, 24 ministerial departments, and then there are dozens of other places around the web. 
Um, so we're moving all of these to Goodwood K. That's something I'll talk about in a bit more detail in a minute. Um, each of these things was like um, had some budget. This was made um, a rewired, young rewired state pack day by a 17 year old uh, Jordan Hatch, who's actually been working with us. He's a great developer. Um, and it's a play of cards, right, with um, government department budgets. So you have to guess whether, you know, uh, this is going to be lower, I guess it's going to be lower. Uh, we'll see we've got the internet access. But you get the idea. And, um, and one of the things that's surprising, oh, <laughs> uh, uh, so it could be, um, it could be that uh, it's because, no, well, let's just not dwell on that. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the point I have to make is that actually the budget for each of these departments is bafflingly different, and they were all, and they you know they weren't doing much learning which you know, came to how they spent the money better than how they built the websites. So by having sort of a central place, we can share that learning. Now, um, so after sort of um, you know uh, Martha got her sort of okay, she went off and got a team together, and it was quite a small team. And that team was sort of like based, you know, inside um, a dreadful Hercules house, dreadful building, um, but with some great people who've been working on direct global work. Hallelujah! So this is the important thing to say: is just you've got new people in, but the people we're working with, by and in every year, and we really understand what's going on and help us, and we help them. But the first thing that was sort of uh, this is the um, the five um, stages of ignorance. Um, so by showing you this, you're now all on stage three, um, or higher. Um, now, it's obviously written by a C program, because it starts at zero. Um, now, the thing is, they didn't know what they didn't know. So they need to do some kind of discovery. And as we all know, the best way to do any kind of discovery is to build something, build some software and learn from that. So they built a, an alpha uh, website. This is alpha, again, on the National Archives. Um, and this is their first attempt, and this is what they came, kind of came back with. It's got a few issues, um, it's got a few things which are a bit wonky. I really like the way that, um, I think this is something they used, they said, oh, and this is not, you know, other search engines are available, but they say Google's our homepage, you know, search our homepage. By and large, the front page of Direct Gov, and the same is true today of Gov UK, is not one of the highest visited web pages. People search for it, and they hit the content straight away. So we put the search right at the front. Um, after going for a bit, and uh, that, that you know, provided some feedback, they went and built a beta. So the alpha built very quickly, a small team. Beta took a bit longer because they started to make it a little bit more real. Um, at this point, they started to bring in the design team. I really like these icons. Uh, they're kind of, I thought they, these would be on coasters and t-shirts and tea towels. <laughs> um, they're kind of, one thing they get across is it's sort of, even it's one website, Behind the scenes, it's lots of small applications that are sort of doing one task in hand. We kind of have this kind of uh, way of building things, which is uh, if we're building it, uh, somebody's talking about calendars, we'll build a little calendar app. Or we're talking about contacts, we'll build a contact app. And um, one of the things you kind of need to do is um, is sort of do things like uh, calculate whether what your maternity benefit will build a smart answer, as we call it for that, which is like a choose your adventure. You can go and explore these in the UK. But, um, but one of the things I really like is the URLs on a, on a kind of web you know, uh, URL that's just. And I really like um, where the URL just grows as you, as you make answers. Um, anyway, um, as, as I, think I, I think I've got the last slide across. Is, um, this is what the Good UK looked like at the time of launch. So you sort of see, actually it turned out we weren't very good at search. Search is really hard. Um, so we left search to the search engines and we sort of like downplayed on the page. Um, and you know, it's sort of looking a little bit more polished, that's what it looked like when we launched, and this is what it looks like now. And we put search back in because we put a lot of effort into our search. Um, if you actually want to understand uh, who's using GoodWK, looking in real time. I, I don't have a dashboard, unfortunately, yeah. uh, but there's a real time dashboard in the office of who's searching for what. And every single thing is like a heart rending story. You know, you sort of see what to do when somebody dies, or. Um, uh, I've lost my car keys and uh, blah blah blah, my passport, and, you know, what do we do like this? They're all little human stories like just tripping up the page. Um, so having gone through that little process, we kind of um, got together and there's a bit of pressure on us to make a gel. I don't know if you know what a gel is, but it's, um, it's kind of used in design circles. It's like how you build a brand, you, you kind of give people uh, 
know, PNGs and CSS and HTML and say, right, do that. And we realized actually that wasn't very useful. It would be something that we would have to maintain forever. Um, it's actually much more useful to say how we built it than actually just gives the output what we built. And so we built these things called design principles. And as time goes on, I'm actually warming to them more and more. The one that uh, we are changing, I think, I mean, this will iterate on these. But uh, built for introduction, I think, is, well, that's now becoming a business for everyone. Uh, but by and large, these are great. Uh, I, have, I kind of like to do, I've got kind of, a sort of GitHub project in a little kind of minute. And I kind of started to. Um, do doodles for each of the. Um, uh, I've um, started to do doodles for uh, each of these uh, principles. So the first one, which is really helpful in lots of different circumstances, and it's great because we're working in public service. I know if you're working in an ad agency or something, it might be harder to, to use this one. Uh, but start with the needs, and by the needs, not the needs of the firm, not the needs of government, but the needs of people using the site. And that's helpful in two regards. The first one is um, is actually just getting down to the core amount of content. Now, you know, whenever there's a page that's on the website that you've experienced, I mentioned search was hard earlier. Uh, it's, it's hard to build a good search when there's lots of content that shouldn't be on there. I mean, my best example um, with Direct Gov was there was a page on uh, Direct Gov, which I kid you not, was green guidance for holding a barbecue, in which the first paragraph was the description of uh, if it's called one pullover. Now, that's not what your government's there for. You know, the government's not there to give advice, it's to tell you what you need to do. Right? So it's good for that kind of criteria, but it's also really good um, when I'm dealing with, uh, right, so I'm an architect, and I go in, I'm going into departments, and every department I go to, the first thing they show me is an architecture diagram. And I'm not kidding, you know, I, I took the one I'm going to get, I've got about 20 of them on the draw, and they're all the same. They're, they're just plumbing. Right, they're dull. And when you say, well, okay, you should be a plumbing, what's a house? And what are you building here? What are you, what's, what's required of this? What's the need of this? Then they start to flap a little bit. And that's our massive criteria for doing this. Um, the other thing, um, which sort of goes towards the going wholesale uh, discussion, is to do less. Now, uh, nobody will get this metaphor, I'm sure. Um, so, it's a manical joke. So, it's basically, um, it's quite, it's quite hard to make things with, you can't make a souffle from fried eggs, right? But you can make it from raw eggs. So the less we do, the more we can enable other people to build upon what we've got. And then there's the do the hard work to make it simple. Um, that doesn't mean to sort of dumb it down, although we actually do a lot of user testing on Good UK. And some of the criticisms we hear, uh, especially people with professional like accountants, they're kind of worried that we've uh, lost some nuances when we make text from legalese to human legal text. Uh, but you know, we do a lot of user testing with people with uh, you know, low reading ability, uh, who are disabled, uh, you know, uh, are prompt with you know, non text territory, you know, all the rest of it, all things you expect. And you know, circumstances that people read the content on the UK is not what we might expect. I mean, one, one of the it's, I guess it's a favourite pages, but uh, one of the most best pages I think could be case, what to do when somebody dies. Right? You know, we're all going to be in that circumstance at some point. Right? And you go to that page, it's just told exactly what you have to do in order. Um, and if you actually looked at the previous page, it was not very helpful. Uh, so an, an example of what to do, you know, how to sort of um, do the hard work to make it simple, is what we did to launch could be case. So, um, can I show you this video, or a bit of this video? It's only like a minute long. I don't think you'll be able to hear it, which you might thank me for. It's actually, um, oh, uh, it might not mind if I do it, but it's actually Sug singing It Must Be Good, right? It's a, it's a two minute advert, um, and, it, and it, sort of, it must have cost a fortune. It's got everybody who was well known at this time um, in, in it, uh, including uh, Christopher Biggins dressed as a baby, uh, uh, farting. Um, now, this is trying to get to encourage people to use Good UK, uh, to use Direct Gov. So, when it came to launching you know, Good UK, you know, we built this sort of, um, you know, we kind of we built the beta, which is on the right hand side, this, this one here. And nobody was just going to it. Well, why would they? It's a beta of a site. You know, you want the real information, so you go to the real website. So, you have Direct Gov and Business Link, and all that traffic. 
So we could have run a massive campaign. We could have got some back in again, and uh, you know, uh, and you know, and spend money on it. But in fact, what we thought we'd do is do the hard work to make it easy. So what we thought we'd do is just redirect existing sites to the new site, and not just some lame, you know, top thing going to the front page of WK. But if somebody Googled for a piece of content, they would just you know click on the link to Derek Gook, and it would boom. Um, it turned out that was quite a lot of work. Uh, I, <laughs> I mean, I kind of like, you know, this is quite a shirt moving in my hand on a little bit, you know. Uh, um, I kind of, one of my outlets is to do it all when people are saying things which make them grumpy. Um, but um, just people, the way people thought about content was really messy and scary. And in fact, you know, the web's dead easy. Uh, all we've got is URLs, you know, people have bookmarked or linked to them, or they've got stationery with a direct good link. But all this URLs, that's the beauty of the web. And all we had to do was uh, make a decision. You know, when we got like a, a URL, uh, this is actually making it more complicated than it is, you've got two choices. You either are redirected to the equipment page, or, or a suitable page where you might get off, or you say, this is gone, right, it's archived. And, um, you know, one of my small victories was not to just put 4 on 4, but to put 410, which is the other major status we've got, which is page one of the lists. And um, I can probably show, actually, I should maybe show you how, I, I can't worry really about time, but um, if you go to a direct good page, like pull on the pull other page now, you'll get a message, you know, an error page that says, this page is gone. You've got two choices. You can go to Good UK and try and find the content there, or you can see this page on the National Archives. Um, we tried to sort of do a good job of, of this and we're monitoring it. This app isn't, isn't probably yet, but I'm about to uh, uh, prompted by an FOI request that actually we were going to do it anyway. And we put all the stats onto it onto the GitHub and then people play with it. Uh, there are a few gaps, one of them was when I had flu and I put the thing, and then it was over Christmas. Um, but um, the stats, you know, kind of like since the launch, you know, kind of show a decline in traffic. Not as much as you might expect. It shows a lot of kind of all kind of traffic still coming from you know, other sites which link to us. Um, the grey is 301s, that's a 210, uh, and the red is 404s and errors. There is a natural background radiation of errors on any website. Um, but, so this is a kind of the long tail. Most people go into the page, uh, and then it goes down, and then you, know, you can sort of see an error there. It turns out that's the 404 page. On the uh, good as was, so we left that as a 404, and it goes down, you know, and just do a few errors. Um, we haven't done as well on every single site. Um, some of them are kind of, you know, you look at it and think, oh, what errors there? Um, these were kind of pages which we, uh, um, well, actually, it's up to the department to fix this, but in, in this case, it's not something that's worrying them because it's like pictures of uh, prime ministers which were. Uh, Linked on some websites in recent or which they've carried on with four or four. Um, some sites are still getting active traffic. It's like an MOD site which we bring back to the Good UK. Um, you know, got like a, a blip there. And it turns out that that's um, um, this page. I thought it might be a market or something, but it's actually it actually turned out to be this page. So, I mean, the reverse and that are pretty strange. There must be something on the radio or television screen, people are like. Google and find your page. Um, it's kind of interesting. So we have this kind of, um, you know, the, the next design principle is iterated into a game. I've shown you that with the, the Grid Beta. Uh, it also happened with my design principles. Uh, one of the designers in the team quite liked to play Little Doodle, so you can do some couple of posters. And uh, we're going to try and share those um, pretty soon. Um, but in some context, that's fairly straightforward, I think. It's sort of, um, it's basically you know, make the site responsive, you know, but also think about the circumstances people use the site. So, for example, um, we're working with Universal Credit at the moment, uh, and a lot of their user base is probably mobile, so that site will no doubt be mobile first. Um, I don't know, we're, we're depending on user feedback, of course. You know, so, um, consistent, not uniform, um, that's my best articulation for that is uh, it should be two different. Uh, booking a driving test as it is to book a prison visit. You know, they should just be the same sort of fit look and feel. Um, now this is where it gets more interesting to me as an architect. Um, so we, we have this thing called build digital services for websites. I got a bit grumpy because I kind of live through the rest of the rest of the soap wars, but um, <laughs> and I kind of want you know web stuff to win, but actually it's going beyond web. And 
there's a little kind of diagram at the bottom there, which like stir pipes to something which looks scarily more complicated, but it's much better. There's a video uh, online which uh, which is like how technology will change the impact of government, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, again I commend to you to watch. Uh, but this is the, the kind of outcome. You go for the stir pipes, and you move into a world where instead of going to like one of the sort of big four or five you know suppliers, we can actually enable lots of small suppliers to come, and that's basically what we're doing at the moment. Is when we build something, we start small, we bring a small uh, SME to work with us, and then as it gets bigger, we, we you know use more resources from lots of different people, and you know there are still you know jobs for you know large sort of commodity stuff, hosting and what have you, and then you have sort of common services such as. Um, you know, uh, I, uh, you know, IVA and um, you know, uh, satellite insurance and what have you. And then there's, there's some specific stuff that we built for the website, and then the top is kind of a good UK kind of, you know, round top, I guess. And that's kind of where we're going at. And so, really, you know, this one of the things that's kind of leveled up is we, you've built a lovely website, you know, it's design of the year, and you want a, a black pencil from the design studios. But actually, you use direct window dressing, and that's not what's going on here at all. Because actually, we're trying to change things at the heart of the mix. <coughs> and another way of articulating this is really that um, you know, we're now, you know, as in Martha's uh, vision, uh, we've gone from the publications now to looking at transactions. And this is where the money is spent. Um, this is the Transactions Explorer, again, it's on Good UK. Uh, it's quite a nice little thing to, to you know, you know, jump around and sort of see you know, where your money is going. This is the number of transactions. Um, there is a cost per transaction on here, which is, um, you know, again, you know, worth really looking at. Um, I, I'm just putting, I'm just picking all things up and thinking what they are, but you get the idea. So you go to a particular transaction, it'll tell you how many are per year and what the cost per transaction is. And you can rapidly see the economics of this. Um, you know, sort of, I think car tax online is, you know, 50% of traditional adoption, that's one of the best adopted to the existing services, that's still at least it's in the cost of transaction for a non digital you know, it's quite scary. Oh, so, so, what does it mean? Uh, oh, so, but, so basically, it's sort of things like, I don't know, if you apply for a passport renewal, how much does that cost to actually renew your passport? Uh, a transaction is a uh, you know, kind of exchange of goods or goods or services. So, one of the things. Oh, um, so that was the thing I kind of caveated it with. I was just looking around. I'd have to read that. I think what it is. But it's all online. And I, you know, I sort of, uh, I, I kind of um, look at go away and explore some of these things. Think, mm -hmm. <laughs> so to try and because you know we could build the UK in one small bubble inside of a you know an office with bunting and you know kind of geeks. That's not really where it's at. You know, it's at the, the transactions are all in departments, and the departments are spread around the country. So what we did was we um, we got um, each of the departments, or um, I, think, I think all the departments have published one, but a lot of departments have uh, published a digital strategy. And in that digital strategy, they sort of outline uh, three or maybe four uh, transactions which were kind of like you know, worthwhile doing. Um, you know, so they had a high you know, number of transactions per, per, per year and they were kind of you know, valuable. And if you kind of, if you look at, uh, if you drew a graph of the number of transactions per year uh, compared to you know, the number of different transactions, it would be, a, you know, to draw to scale, to be like that high at the bottom of those transactions and you know, to scale would be you know, really high, like canary wall sort of thing. And it would be like to pet and stall to the, Tail, massive long tail of transactions, you know, from something like you know uh, doing your tax online to uh, burials at sea, which are uh, ten a year. So we've got to outline twenty-five of these uh, these things in all, um, and these are basically um, under underway at the moment. You can see what phase they're in. So electoral registration is you know I don't know if you know but the um, there's kind of a move afoot to go from the kind of Victorian dad model, where you, you know one head of the household says you can vote in the household, to individual voter registration. So we're working on that. Um, that's voter registration, not voting online. Uh, so and you see some of these things are in sort of discovery phase. So that's like the 
the letter writing phase, and then the alphas when we start building software, and then going live when we switch to all service off and we go to the new one. And you know, some of these are quite small, some of these are quite big. You know, Universal Credit is one of our uh, examples now. And um, you know, I mean, and I, I'm sort of, you know, as a team, we're, we're kind of going through this, this forum where we're, we're going out to the departments. Um, and those departments are spread around the country. And so if you're sending people out to the field, um, you know, one of the kind of, you know, I, I, I should be wary about metaphors, but like, you know, so kind of, if you're trying to, I was going to say mission, you have to do missionaries, you're going out to sort of try and sort of, uh, you know, tell them about you know, a new way of doing things. Um, one of the things you kind of learn you know, quite quickly is that uh, a lot of people who already heard about the religion, you know, knew the new thing, and they say, oh, we're already doing that child. And my answer to that is always very easy. It's like, but are you being that child? And that's really, uh, I mean, do people know what this is? This metaphor here so this is the cargo report, cargo culture, cargo culture. And we get a lot of that. And um, so the way we kind of try and help people, you know, give people who understand this already, who are maybe in departments or people who are sitting up departments, um, you know, the materials to have that, those sort of debates and help people understand what, what we mean. Uh, so we've actually codified a lot of our work. This is called Service Design Manual, which talks about those phases. There's some amazing stuff on here. Um, you know, any part of web development or even any development, you'll probably find you know, materials on here. If you're having discussions inside your organization about sort of, uh, you know, oh, agile will work or open source and secure real answers on here. Um, and coming from the government, that's probably quite helpful, I guess. The, and that's kind of like a carrot like, and the stick is uh, before any service can go live, we have a digital assessment. And the moment it's just services over 100,000 transactions a year, but we're kind of moving into the territory of, uh, of sort of doing uh, uh, transactions in general. And there are 25 points. Most of these are criteria about user focus. The ones which I'm sure you'll like best are um, you have to. Um, uh, Demonstrate some. Well, where are we? So I'll try and find on the page. Um, I don't know what, I can't so there is uh, there is a, a criteria to use open standards and uh, and open source. And there's also a uh, last one, which, which a lot of people find quite challenging, is to actually demonstrate the service working using the minister. Right. So the minister has to sort of you know show it's usable by people. And so this is kind of uh, leading to sort of a, a change in this sort of, um, the way that government IT is working. Um, that's why, why we use digital rather than IT, because it's a better word. So the kind of final thing is say, um, you know, what, where this is going is um, an articulation of why open things are better. Yeah, this is like a viewing source on a, on a website. Um, that's what I thought of all actually, but uh, legislation.gov.uk. So uh, it's where all the kind of laws are, are published. Um, so I think I don't think about time to actually show the site itself, but the site itself is lovely. It's like all the laws in London are kind of published there, but there are businesses who can publish, you know, in, on paper and electronically all those laws and annotate them, and they basically take the data out of the website and they put them out into the field. And they're kind of compelled when they spot an error to go back to the canonical source, to go back to legislation and actually get them changed there. So that cycle thing is kind of a really powerful way of explaining to people the value of this. And the other thing is um, the value of being open. And the other thing to say is um, there is a kind of maturity model when it comes to software, um, which is basically that um, you know, people build one-off you know, projects or stir pipes. But um, when, they, when they become useful in the right thing, they become turned into products. And then finally, if it's something that's really worthwhile, I mean, you can build a platform. And we've got a number of platforms. One of them is, um, is Identity Insurance, which I want to talk about, so it's often so nice. Uh, this is, this is um, actually only one person using this service at the minute, I suppose it is this afternoon. But um, this is a live dashboard of people applying to do things like uh, hold, hold a, uh, open an ice cream shop or hold an, an event. Um, and you can see the drop-off rates. This service isn't great, it's, it's, we know it's not great, but it's, it's good enough. 
it's better than what was there before. Uh, so it's got a drop off rate, that's probably because you download the PDF document and you're supposed to fill in an email back and people download things multiple times, not you. There's a page called Choosing Technology, which um, is, if you squinted it, it's about open source, but, uh, open standards, but it's actually um, really just, just says it doesn't matter what software or what technology you use, as long as you can change your mind. Right? And that comes again from the other new open techniques we might use. So all, all sort of uh, source code we write um, is, um, is on GitHub, and we're now trying to get the departments to write software that's on GitHub or in the open lease and under an open source license. So we can take things which we've learned from one uh, service and put them to another without having to go through you know, uh, you know, intellectual property agreements. And so the final thing, I think, I think the talk, I was going to talk a bit more detail about the APIs, but um, you know, uh, this, this, these are some principles which I put together about how to actually expose things onto the web. And really, you know, this is the one that's, in, that's important. I actually wrote um, the Geek Beer Magazine, which I'm sure you all do, if you have to think about um, is I wrote this on the, on the wall on an index card saying, use HP methods as Roy intended. And Tim Burns leaves is the office, and he got very upset. And <laughs> so that was my lesson then. Um, so the final thing to say is that when it comes to open standards, if you're interested in standards, you're interested in this area, um, we are um, basically uh, codifying standards which will uh, go into contracts and procurements. Um, the first two we're looking at the moment is, um, is UTF-8 and URIs or URLs. I don't think it's going to be very contentious. But as we go on, uh, we do need domain level experience, the white space stuff. Um, and we kind of need some help with, um, I think one of the ones coming up is about the ambulance service and emergency response, which I think we do need domain experts to help us pick the right technologies. But those will help, again, both the net credit level playing field for suppliers. Um, so that's my kind of final slide to leave you on. Um, and that's kind of the vibe that I want to give you this, this talk. I mean, there's been many frameworks, thanks over the years. Um, but there's a digital services framework coming up, and there's a thing called G Cloud. And that's the way to sell to, to government now, is to go through those, those frameworks. And we're trying to make the, the bar, barriers to you know, normal small companies you know, to participate in those in much lower. I mean, the, the way they're responding is actually quite well. Um, they're, they're using our language, but actually, I think they are you know, doing well, and just, you know, being well, and just doing. Uh, having spoken to a few of them. So you know, in, in any large organisation, you've got you know, varieties of people. And we're just basically empowering the people who know how to build good quality digital sites, which are going to price rather than people who sort of buy them off the shelf and slam together. So I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> it's working. I'm doing government work and I'm a one man band. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I can give you an example uh, of how it's worked is um, inside Go, which is part of, you know, it's like kind of the, the, uh, the stuff that publishes policies and speeches and what have you, it was built by a small team. Uh, we wouldn't even have enough people, so we brought in Go Free Range, which is like a four-man band, and they worked with us for a while, and then as the team got bigger, they just became part of the team, and then when they wanted to do something else, they disappeared, and then later on we had to do translations for that, that for the foreign office. They came back in and just really brought a small part. And that's not to elevate them, it's just a very typical sort of supplier supply interaction we're having, rather than just sort of saying, okay, we're going to sign a big deal for, you know, and if we do our accounts up front and let you get on with it. We've got time for one more question, and then we're going to have some action on this one, so everyone can hear. Make it a run. Sorry, I'd like to pick a few different parts. I don't know, oh, I don't know if you're big, sorry. Don't worry, easy to get. 
reading the newspapers, it does rather look. It's, it's fairly obvious your ultimate bosses, well, in my opinion, anyway, don't really know what they're talking about in terms of IT. Um, and it's very, very refreshing to hear you uh, uh, setting Agile uh, and using Agile successfully. So you're making me nervous because I mean, I, I don't well, no, I just want to. I think, so I think it's three, three, you know, it's like when you hear any message, don't forget it's coming through three filters there. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely. You know, but um, I just want to, so I find myself in a parallel situation. I wonder if you had any advice for somebody who's trying to do Agile where their ultimate bosses wouldn't know good IT if they were bit Right, so, I mean, uh, my point was at the start was, was actually a way to win any argument. It's like, we have this joke in the office, it's like, oh, you've got a document to a curve fight. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't build software, and that builds trust, and, they, and also, people can agree on documents, but they, you know, they want to see a certain I mean, Anybody who's a boss, right, might not know about an ESB versus a web, you know, a web server or whatever, but they'll know a crap website and see one. So, you know, just build software, that's the way to go. Thank you very much, Paul. And, uh,